Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Technology Show, where our experts translate geek into regular speak. How do you feel about mixed reality versus virtual reality? And what are your thoughts? Gadgets or games? And where exactly are you on the battlefield of Windows versus Apple? Stay tuned for our special geek guests. And now, it's over to our tech experts. So, it's that time again for the technology show where we translate geek into regular speak. A little bit of a flip around here. It This was. Is, uh, Talking about flip around, I'm wearing my Alcatel shirt. I got a little bit of FOMO last week. Well, in fact, probably a good thing I didn't rock up. It might have looked a bit uh, spare with us both wearing the same shirt. But and but I was wearing a greenish color shirt. Like it's true. Now, so it's true. Anyway, I didn't have a weather discussion, which is where I normally go to you. But uh, yeah, shirt now, discussion. If you're new to the show, you are listening to Brett Levy speaking, and this is your other co-host, Arya Sternberg. What's up? That's it. If you're new to the show in this format, uh, this is a, an auspicious occasion because <laughs> um, the first time in a long time that you've actually introed the show. It is true. And it's going to be your last show with us for a while. It is true. So Although, um, ha the Skype is a good one. Yeah, we'll definitely have to, to, to get you in there. But we've been talking about it uh, over the over the months. Arya has been traveling quite a lot to Indonesia. And uh, he's now going to be moving over to Indonesia. So um, he's going to be a friend of the show. And uh, definitely, uh, we, you're right, Skype. We'll have to wake you up. Early. And mind you, it's not that early. What's it, two hours? Oh, I've, I've, I've been, I have to wake up at five in the morning there, which is nine here. So it's Fantastic, because even earlier than we normally record. So good, we'll yeah. get you on. Anyway, for this show, let's, uh, let's go back to, well, normality, but stuff. Uh, App of the Week. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out to local business. Um, and I've chosen The Foodery as my App of the Week. Hmm. Do you know who The Foodery is? I'm, I'm giving away my eastern suburbs uh, um, hanging. So the foodery, it's actually part of Caltex. Um, the coffee that you get in little food shops inside the Caltex um, servo convenience stores, they call them the foodery. But the reason why I chose this one, uh, yeah, that's it, the, the, the coffee cup. Um, when you go into Bondi, into the station, there's a coffee shop there called the foodery. Now, for anyone that says marketing and advertising doesn't work, you're wrong. It says they download our app and get a free coffee and muffin. That was the call to action. Right. So, of course, they had me at free, right? Yeah. So, you download that. Now, why would I make it app of the week? So, it's to order coffee. Open the app. It says order now or pre-order. You select pre-order. You tell it what time you're going to get there and where there is. Okay. So, when you get to the station, your coffee is waiting for you about to be made. Um, about to be made. Well, I mean, they'll work it out. So, like, if you say you come in at 7.30, if you get there at 7.29, they'll make it at 7.29, 30 seconds. I don't know. But you don't have to wait. You don't have to queue. Your food's ready. The other thing with the foodery, they've taken a, a leaf out of 7-Eleven's uh, hat at the servos. Not at this place. This place you pay full price, obviously, because they've got you, right? You're in a station. It's not bad. It was three fifty for a coffee, so it's not, like, over. But at the Caltex, it's a dollar. You can get a dollar coffee, and it's good coffee. Um, again, I'm not saying 7-Eleven coffee isn't good, but uh, the snob in me would rather walk around with a foodery cup than a 7-Eleven one dollar cup and telling everyone I'm a cheapskate. Totally. Uh, but or actually, I like prefer to use my reused cup anyway. But that's cool. It's clean. And the other nice thing about it is that because it's part of Caltex, it shows you on the, the map the closest foodery, Caltex, what services are available there, mm. what fuel is available there. So Caltex is kind of coming into the app through the love of food and coffee. Um, and you can also use Caltex Pay. So you can have the Caltex Pay, prepay, all linked up as well. How does it compare with uh, the app that was formerly known as Beat the Queue? I uh, can't answer that because I don't know. I never used Beat the Queue. Very similar. Um, it probably offer. doesn't. I think they've probably taken from Beat the Queue. Yeah. Um, I think the most important thing, though, is, and, and this has been something why I liked and chose as the app of the week, because I think there's a bit of thinking that went into here. When you go into Bondi Station, if you come from the escalators or from the stairs, you kind of filter down and towards the trains, and they're there. Generally, you go into a station, you're in a rush. You're not going there to hang around. 
No. So I don't get time to get a coffee. Unless I miss the train and it's seven minutes and I've got all the time in the world. But generally, I'm quite good. I know my train's coming at 9.20. I get there at 9.18 or 9.19 because trains run on time and they don't depart early. They depart on time or late. While I'm walking to Bondi Junction, I know I'm five minutes away. Yep. I can hit the app. I can order a coffee. It's paid. I literally go there and they go, uh, I say, here, yeah, I'm Brett. And they go, here we go. And off I go. That's cool. So I don't actually have to miss out on having a coffee. There's nothing worse than sitting on the train for 10, 10 15, 16 minutes to, let's say, Town Hall going, oh, I wish I had a really coffee, had a coffee yeah, right? That's true. So um, local business, um, very simple, very clean. Um, we're coming up into winter in the next week. We, we hit autumn in, what, two weeks' time? Three weeks' time is autumn. Very our awesome clocks. Now. Oh, shit. Yeah, we, we are, are, no, we are clocks, in autumn now. Yeah, yeah, but in April, our clocks go back. What's the first weekend of April, isn't it? It's the first Sunday of April we turn back. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, something like that. So coffee's going to become more important, that co- the slightly cooler morning, you know? So, yeah, the foodery. And it's on Android and Apple as well. It is. There we go. It's time for things with a Z. A Z. A, a Z. Z. A Z. A Z. So, speaking of Zs... I've started, I've removed Australian spelling from my phone, and I now type with American spelling, and I intentionally put Zs but wherever now, they're meant to be. second, in Indonesia, when they say, when they spell organization, or... Z. Is it a Z? A Z. Really? Yeah. So they've yeah. taken a page of the American book? Yeah. Well, fine then. Take your Z. <laughs> Got my Zs going. So for the listeners that don't know, that's something that Ari and I, like, for the last couple of years, like, any email you write any presentation you in fact that's how we got to things and screens and news with a z so we could have the z or z discussion so things with a z so give I'm, me a thing I, i'm gonna start it off okay um slight slight i can't really gripe about it because i just bought a new headset but um hold on a second i'm gonna throw you under a bus you bought another headset i did okay so Women collect shoes and handbags. Um, men don't really collect lots of stuff. Well, there might be some men that do. But you have never met an individual like this in your life. This is the headphone person. Th- this is what REA does. Yeah. Another headset. And, and well, <laughs> yes. Uh, so what's the brand? What does it do and why? This is Aftershocks, A-F-T-E-R-S-H-O-K-Z. And so I... They were a Kickstarter company or Indo uh, company in, in, originally, Indiegogo. right? Indiegogo, that's right. So we, we reviewed the original uh, yeah. Trex Titanium headset that I had. Uh, their claim to fame is, I, I believe, the first and still leading um, uh, bone conducting headset. And so some of the other ones have taken uh, note off their book. Uh, Bose has the bone conducting um, eyeglasses with the speakers in them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But these were the first bone conducting uh, headset. And so um, after, I think I'm going to say over three years, uh, the headset that I got originally has finally, it's still working. but That's pretty good though. Three years. Pretty good. And excessive usage. Um, I use them at the gym. I use them running. I use them in uh, rain, sleet, snow. Um, this one, I think the speakers in both of the ear areas have become dislodged and there's a bit of a tinny sound, but they still work and they still hold quite a charge. And I just kind of said, you know, I'm not going to be in a place where I can receive them. So do, I'm gonna get do you, one. do you really need an excuse? Come on, just, just own it up. I, you didn't need an excuse to order a headset. It's not, n- n- I kind of did. I just said, you know what? <laughs> so I reached out to them and I said, look, I've been a, an avid fan and I tried to get them on their website because they had a special free gift thing going on uh, Instagram. And so from their website, they don't deliver to Australia. And then they wrote to them, they wrote back and said, okay, you can get it from this shop or whatever, blah, 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 got through Amazon. Okay, good. So Trex Air in hand. Um, they look cool. I mean, they, they actually look very similar to the ones that they, you had. They look cool. They're super so, I mean, light. They haven't, oh yeah, they are. Huh? Yeah. So um, it's radio, so people can't, that is light though. I mean, there's battery and all that inside you and it's, that's yeah. light. That is light. Uh, good six hours battery life. Um, waterproof, uh, water resistant, resistant. Yeah. So, so sweat resistant, sweat resistant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they just do the trick. You, you know, you, you, they are not blocking your ear canal. So you can hear outside sounds. Um, I think that they could do to be a little bit louder. Uh, but, but that's again, bone conducting. I don't think that's them. I don't think they can actually really push that much more through. 
the it's, tick. It's true. There, there are there are there is sound coming through. There is still speakers, um, and there is uh, actual sound, not just a bone conduction coming through. So, um, I, I think they could possibly increase the sound a bit. But what I have found is, uh, and and YouTube YouTubers out there, please make sure that your sound settings are correct and you listen to your output before you publish it because. Half the time, it's just way too quiet. Yeah. Some people have complained about our show having that same problem as well. It's true. Uh, Mr. Rog42. Yeah, that would be my, that would be probably my <laughs> fault as well. Um, <laughs> but that, that's, that's a things review. Aftershock, shout out to you guys. You cool. guys have, you know, lasted beyond just the Kickstarter uh, crowdfunding. That alone event. is actually worth the shout out because yeah. that's the hard part. So, yeah. Well done to you. Yeah. And they, and they look good, man. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, I remember I had those glasses, the lucid glasses. They you can get them optical or sunglasses with yeah. a bone conductor. That's right. And there's a lot of people that do that as well. My only problem, I think, from a working point of view, if I'm working on my own, they're actually quite cool because my ears are open. I can hear shit that's going on and so on. I do like my music loud. I'm one of those guys that are making himself deaf. That by the age of sixty, I'm not going to hear anything. Uh, and I'm not the only one, right? Sit on a train and you can hear what people are listening to. It's just blaring out of their headsets. Yep. Um, so I battle with bone conduction. And in fact, when I use, you know, I mean, Jabra's been a friend of the show. They give us uh, nice headsets to play with every now and then. And we're still waiting for some, some more toys. <laughs> Damn um, it. Give me my headset. But um, um, the... The ones that I'm using at the moment, the 65Ts, you know, the in-ear, yep. they block everything out. In they fact, do. on the app, I can switch to hear through if I want to, but I like not hearing it. I like active noise cancelling. I, I want to be locked out. It's my choice. So, so that I battle with. The Samsung Buds. That's when they're giving away now right, with the... Galaxy the, Buds are giving away with the yeah, S10. Yeah. Have you tried uh, those, by the way? I haven't yet. Um, That's strange for you. Uh my choice to invest in this headset versus earbuds was strictly because I actually want to be able to be a know that um, my ear canal is not going to get tired. And the, the some of the reviews on the on this, the Galaxy Buds is that uh, your ears feel a bit tired and, and um, just not comfortable after hours of use. That's, yeah, yeah right? I, can, I can understand it. And um, the second one is. I'm running outside, I'm going through the rain, and it gets dislodged and falls out and suddenly, oh, off the cliff. So, you know, and, and that's that's the bone that's conducting. That's a big problem with us, yeah, with the buds. These guys' aftershocks are all about, you know, out in Boulder, running the trails, out in, you know, the ocean surfing, maybe not surfing, but um, out doing, like, all that kind of stuff. So it's much more the outdoor adventure experience. And and my, my only gripe with these guys would be in the gym, the sound of the music overwhelms the um, the volume of the. That's headphones. the thing, right? So, yeah. like, and I know you like to listen to your ebooks and that as well. If you got surrounding noise, um, you can't do it. Um, okay, but look, good things with a good things with a Z. Oh, we're not done yet. Ah, there is some other things with a Z news that I think we need to. Uh, you just talk said about. Z. Things with a Z. I don't know. It's <laughs> a Z. <laughs> I've drawn it into you, man. <laughs> Did you see the twelve point five million dollar Bugatti La Voiture Noir? So it oh. just sounds like you swart me. Oh my in goodness! Something. Just say that again. The twelve point five million Bugatti bu- bu- uh, La Voiture Noir. Voiture. La Voiture Noir. Yeah. No, I didn't. Is twelve point five million dollars. What is it? A car? It's a car. I should hope yeah. so. If it's a Bugatti, at the yeah, price yeah, yeah. tag. It's got is that a, the new uh, Veyron, like the new upgrade of what yeah, Veyron is? I think so. I, it, did, I did see something uh, like that. W16 engine. What does it even mean? I don't know. Like, you know, it's like a flat eight and a flat six or whatever. It's like a W16. So that's two eights. I guess so. v, it, That's what it would be. Two Vs. Two V8s. Right. It makes a W. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But the, the car looks wow. It looks pretty. That does look cool. Is that a concept? Pretty crazy. Is that, I know it looks like this is actually coming out. Mind you, with them, they, they do make them. They make them by hand anyway. Yeah. So they can make whatever they want. They'll always be a customer. That's the scary part, is that there's always a customer at those price tags anyway. To- totally show. Um, I'm Well, you've mentioned cars. So I'm going, and I was talking about local just now. So I'm going to stay local. QBE, our insurance underwriters, um, have agreed to underwrite Australia's first uh, automated bus service. So they're going to, they, they're going to, 
do the underwriting insurance. I mean, you can imagine, so we, we we live in the most, well, we live in the nanny state. They don't call us the nanny state for, for, for bad reason. No. So um, I think it's one of the unis have been playing with this. We mentioned this little autonomous bus that they were testing like on one, cl- quite a few was shows it ago. Was it was in Melbourne? Something like that. Yeah. But remember, it was a small little bus in a small area of, of, of road that they were experimenting. Yep. So QB is not helping take that next stage. They're going to make it public, put people on it, and they will underwrite whatever the third party liabilities are with it. Um, I like it though. It means that we're actually finally getting our next batch of trains that are coming out are driverless from on the new routes that they've done. Those are driverless trains. There was a whole thing about, it's funny, the <laughs> people are worried about the machines taking man's job. The, the, the trains are driverless, but we've doubled our police force to, because there won't be people on the trains to protect you. So now yep. they're going to have police going on and off the trains. Um, but the trains will be driverless, so they'll drive autonomous. That's cool. So staying in Things. the automotive space, yes. uh, there's an electric coupe from a company called Piek. Electric? Coupe. coupe? Electric what? Coupe. 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 You just did French so well on your Bugatti. But okay. I always say coupe in America. I know you do. Americans. Coupe. Um, aside from it looking like quite a snazzy car, um, charges to eighty percent in five minutes. Wow! <laughs> yeah. How? Like that's is that what is that what the that, proprietary that, tech? Is? I think that's a shtick. Yeah, it's uh, wow. It's in there. That's so. been, we've mentioned that electric cars. Now it's funny. We were talking about five G last week. Okay, with the whole um, Mobile World Congress wrap up, and we've just been talking about cars now. Cars with a Z. There we go. There you um, go. And I, I love cars, but five G. And cars are synonymous. This is where it all gets really real and really interesting, right? Because that speed of connection yeah. and the information that they need to process to get us way into autonomous. autonomous. Yeah. But two, just to make the car experience better for the user. Even if we were driving, um, it could monitor in real time, divert us, do all kinds of stuff and give us information yeah. at speeds and connectivity that wasn't previously possible. Yeah. Now, BlackBerry plays very strong in the car market from a sense of the software that runs in cars. Um, which is nice. It might be a nice resurgence for them with their you know, with them and five G. Um uh, and that leads me like you've been talking about cars, but it leads me to the story of the again, Australia, calling to ban mobile phones and cars. Mm. That's why I made a note of the story. So our deputy prime minister of infrastructure or something like that, I don't know, Michael McCormack, I think his name is. I don't know, they changed so quickly. Yeah. Um, he's actually written to technology companies asking them to come up and develop tech that will block calls in the phone, uh, in, in a car. Um, Apple already has this. Okay, so sorry, they don't. They kind of have this. You still have to select the function. But if you have an iPhone, you can select the function. And, and in fact, I called Hugh. You know Hugh, Nan, shout out. Yeah. I'll, I'll mate down in Melbourne. Um, I got a text back from him saying, I am currently driving, not getting messages, will revert later. Mm. W- automatically, you just hit a switch. I'm 99.9% sure there's an app on Android that will do that as a- well. You Android Auto. There we go. Yeah. So done. But what he's saying, the minister, which I understand, that still requires a human being. You still have to consciously choose to activate that function. It's, it's not automatic. Um, so when 5G, now we're talking about putting 5G in cars, he's trying to stop calls in cars. It's quite an interesting discussion, right? Because like you've got this tech that can actually do everything, but now you're trying to make sure it doesn't do anything. Yeah. But maybe that is the answer, is that the phone won't work. It'll handshake over onto the screen that's in the car yeah. and do everything itself. You won't be able to touch the phone. You pair your phone with the thing and that will kill the phone. And then the phone takes over and, and maybe won't let a call come through if you're driving in bad conditions. Like these are the good things. If the yeah. weather's bad, we'll stop phones, you know? Until we're no longer driving. Then it's awesome, right? So maybe it's a technology that's actually <coughs> wasted in the next five, six years. We were talking about this the other day. K turns thirteen this year. In five and a bit years time, he'll be allowed to drive. Like he could get a license. It's scary. The question is well it is scary. The question is will, will he, he be driving? Uh, like will he? Why? Uh, I would want him using Uber and rideshare if he's going out having a party because he's drinking. I don't want him driving. So why bother driving? We, we're going to be there anyway with the autonomous vehicles. So the future is soon. So you know the future is actually now, 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 now. Future now. That's <laughs> kind of it is, right? What else you got there? This is a complete change of uh, tech, which is… Uh, we're still on things though, right? Still on things. Things with a Z. And, and this is 
things. Uh, there's a, a smart material, um, which is basically a plastic alternative that can actually change shape um, and use different, uh, I guess, sort of transformative capabilities that uses squid teeth as the, uh, the base. <laughs> Where, where do you find yeah, well, these things? Sorry, I need to read your, uh, your emails, mate. I just, just squid go teeth. To, uh, hashtag, I, I'm going to have to put a hashtag out. Hashtag squid teeth. As squid in the teeth. animal that swims in the sea's teeth. Yep. So I'm I'm curious how, I mean, they say so squid farms that they're going to do, you know, as opposed to, um, you know, petroleum and everything goes into plastics. And I, I think it's great, sort of. Um, I'm, I'm try, <laughs> trying to sort out how it all comes together. Just picture that. Just picture that discussion that happened at the bar that night. Hey, man, like, let's build this more cool material. Yeah, that's cool. What should we use? Uh, what about squid teeth? Squid teeth. teeth. Hmm. Didn't think of that. Let's go. Well, how did, what did they do? Like, go but try Squid like, don't even have teeth. They have, like, that beak thing, so don't they? they yeah. Just, well, wow, that's scary. So we're looking, I'm looking at a picture. <laughs> Holy crap. I thought they had, like, a beak, like a solid beak. It's on, it's on the, I think it's on the suckers of the squid. So these little rings of teeth, like that's micro small. Oh, like okay. Little, little that's little like teeny the pictures rings. of spiders that you always show me. They look yeah. really big. <laughs> that's don't news. Just don't start Come with on. that possum did, thing. You did okay. see that, no, didn't you? I know. You and everyone sent it to me. I didn't send it to you, actually. Well, everyone I didn't. Sent, I everyone that. sent it to me. I was like, this has written. Just so, tell everyone what it is. Get it over with. I'll block my ears and sing happy I, tunes in my head. I think it was in the Amazon. It was the, it first was the time, Amazon. Right, the first time I ever recorded a, a plate, dinner plate-sized uh, <gasps> spider pu- pulling oh, a tarantula sick. and dragging it around. And it looks like it's something possum. from Jim Henson. Yeah, it's, it's pulling a possum. It's, like, yeah. it, it, it looks like... It, lo- it looks like a uh, stuffed animal. I mean, it, lo- it looks so like something. I don't s- camp something. as it is. <laughs> I am never going to the Amazon. If you told me there was yeah. free, if the fir- if the yet-to-be-released iPhone 20 was sitting somewhere in the Amazon and all I had to do was go and fetch it, I'm not. Yeah. Not when there's that kind of shit running around there. Um, yeah. I have two other bits of news that are Cool. I've also got other bits and pieces. Uh, no. Shoot. What's up? Well, you talk about the Amazon. So that you, we all know the Earth's flat, right? Sure. I mean, okay. Of course. So if you watch on Netflix, Beyond the Curve, mm. it's a documentary about flat earthers. Okay. I don't believe the Earth is flat. I, I can't <laughs> keep this up anymore. But it's scary how many people do believe the Earth is flat and can justify it. But why, why I'm bringing this up and, and, and the things with a Z. At the end of the show, they do an experiment to prove to all of us Globers, as they call us, us round earthers, that the earth is flat and it fails. <laughs> it kind of proves the earth's round. And this comment was like, oh, okay, well, that, that's not good. <laughs> like this whole thing that they've been trying to do. Like, oh. Uh, okay, well, that's not good. Um, so, yeah, guys, the, the earth's round. It the really is. Round. Yeah, yeah, it's just... But it's actually an interesting. If you've got an hour and a half of numbing time that you want to just do nothing... We'll just watch Beyond the Curve on Netflix. Yeah. Anyway. Um, this is, I think, some of the coolest news that I've heard, uh, only because... It doesn't involve spiders. It doesn't involve spiders. Okay. Look, when when we were probably teens, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that you probably had one of these or, or aspired to get one, night vision goggles. Uh, I didn't have, but I aspired. Every, every, well, you wanted to be a little boy. Ninja, wanted night vision. Yeah, Joe, going you out. Yeah, yeah. So, night vision eye drops. What? So the, the test on mice yeah, yeah. works. It lasts, of course, the effect it does. lasts we for about two weeks. Yeah, um, but basically the eye drops change uh, how your how the muscles in your eyes oh, react, wow. and it opens up to be able to see the infrared, and so you can actually see That's get night vision. Cool. And this is this is pretty much ready for human trials. Okay, so the word human in trials scares me. I'll Scary. wait for someone else. To- totally, because your eyes are like kind of important, right? It's totally. Like, but but that this is cool. But imagine like the applications that for for intelligence army and that kind oh, of yeah. Well, I or or like in walking it, home at night industry as well. Yeah, walking yeah. at night, being, feeling safe and all that kind of stuff. Wow, that is cool news. <laughs> so mine isn't as cool as that. But this is something you were talking about in last week's show was data. So data hoarding is actually a real thing. So you've seen those TV shows where people hoard stuff yep. like they, their houses get full. I read about this. Yeah, yeah. 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 So data hoarding is, is. In fact, I love this quote. Data hoarding isn't about buying four thousand two hundred thirty-two dollars worth of hard drives. Uh, it's more about actually what you do with the storage. Now, there's a song from Disney, "Let It Go." You know, yeah, yeah. Like, 
the, these guys are break, bragging about having 2.6 petabytes of hard drive storage in their cupboards in their rooms to keep their data. Guys, the tech that we have nowadays can't open some of those files anymore. They, they, we don't have readers to read them. Um, but yeah, so you because the, the reason I thought this was like interesting is last week you were saying that we could put all our data in the cloud and who owns the data in this. Well, these guys clearly are not in that same school of thought. They keep their data and you're getting nothing. It's the flip side. How do you find it? Yeah. Like, how do you know? You remember the, the, the Dewey Decimal System in the library with the cards? The, it was a number system that you would tell you where that reference book was. They sure. probably have to have like a card system to find the which hard drive has which file. Anyway, ugh, not as exciting as eye drops, but yeah. Last last little bit is uh, there was a, a high school student in China <laughs> that built a robot to do handwriting. And so it was handwriting all of her assignments and she'd type it in and handwrite it and then the mother found it and destroyed it. Oh. But, but well done to her, man. That, I know, dude. She created this, I have this to actually robot. Give, it's like, seriously, like, that's that is so cool. cool. I actually have to give Samsung kudos here. On the advert for the S10, which, incidentally, that fold has now been proven is real, right? There's a there's a scene when the lady's looking at a, a foldable device. Yeah. And that is the fold. That's it. That's it. There's a tattoo uh, robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's real. Like, because if, if it isn't real, okay, I don't have a tattoo. But I've watched enough TV shows and seen enough articles of tattoos that go wrong, like spelling yeah. and uh, ink, like the, the, what they call it, the, the shading. The, they get it wrong. Yep. It's a human being that's doing stuff on your skin. Yep. They have got human error. That would be amazing. So you could take any design you want, you scan it in, and then the robot will know which pressure, because it's just pressure, it's all it is, um, and get it absolutely picture perfect. Suppose the guys are going to turn and say, yeah, but then you lose the feel and the warmth. It's like vinyl versus digital music, <coughs> that yeah. warmth that they talk about. Um, the aesthetic. But, I, but that advert, like there's so many cool things in there, but that there. So when you talk about your handwriting thing, um, I love that robot. I think that robot's brilliant. So here's an interesting one. And that, 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 that advert is a great example of it. Um, comparison of how Samsung shows the near future versus Microsoft, which Microsoft is all about screens and sliding content. Yeah, and, that was all about engagement. Know, and do you notice they're playing an old you. song? Totally. Like it's old song yeah. and future Ready Player One tattoo machiney. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I look, I, I got to give them ten out of ten for that ad. I don't know who the agency was behind that, but well done. I mean, that was a great ad. Slight fail though. Uh, and you mentioned the S10. When they launched the the Fold uh, at the launch event, they played a um, different song. Well, they played the same song as the the app the Galaxy the Apple Ten Apple. Did they oh, iPhone Ten? Yeah, oh, I can't believe I didn't um, know that. I would have been all over that. I would have. That would have been. You gave me some. You would have given me some slamming stuff I know, there, man. That, that would have been that's slammable. Um, that's a that's a fail. The the imagination song do really do, 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 yeah yeah you're right because it was because it, it was a different song to the because i would have expected him to carry in that case around that whole here's the future now what will be you know yeah. anyway oh, i didn't know that oh, Slightly, thank you yeah. so chrome not having a qr scanner on an android phone <laughs> and android <laughs> samsung launching a phone okay, okay cool yeah. some more ammo for me i've got two little bits the okay. one is actually more a message for angela um <laughs> we can now solve angela's Laptop problem. Telstra has now brought eSIM technology to Windows 10 PCs. Yay! And if you go, you, they will give you a 30-day trial, so you can try it, um, with up to 30 gigs of data free. So, and I think she has got a Surface. So you, it has to be a compatible Microsoft 10. It can't just be like 10. Um, and I'm pretty damn sure the Surface will be compatible because it's designed for mobility. Obviously, mm. there needs to be something in it, I assume. But, you know, Angela was talking about she can't find the, gripe, the perfect yeah. laptop because it doesn't have a SIM in it. She doesn't want to tether a device. Well, eSIM. Going on from eSIM, and either you mentioned this last week or I read this also in other articles, that guys are now looking or companies are now trying to stress that phones should become eSIM devices. They mm -hmm. shouldn't actually have a SIM card, a SIM card yeah. in them as well. Uh, it was MWC that were talking about that, that the future is eSIM. Just put a platform in. Now, Verizon kind of has been doing that for many years. Remember, if you had a Verizon that's in America, they didn't have SIM card technology. No. You had, if you bought a Verizon phone, and that well, actually came to the floor with um, the iPhone. 
people were buying these Verizon phones and they taking them to other countries and they couldn't use them because there was no SIM card. That's it. So, yeah. So, Angela, um, you need to go and get an eSIM for your Microsoft Surface Pro 10 or whatever it is. I have one last thing. (laughs) Okay. And then we can move on to the next section. The capture code. The little block when you're filling out a form on your computer and it says, I am not a robot. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people say, well, that's a bit stupid because I'm clicking it. It's actually the one thing that bots cannot copy. They could copy the pictures of cars. They could copy the, the little letters that you had because they could read the screen. Yep. They cannot tick. They cannot actually get the mouse to go and tick where it needs to go. When you tick that you confirm, you really? know, they can't do it. It's got them stumped. Huh. So the I'm not a robot, that checkbox, they cannot do it. They can do pretty much everything else, but they cannot. It's actually extremely complicated to recapture the box why why is that i do not know i'm I just mean, the reading one, the article the, the one where you have to actually click the 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 pictures in it that have um see in the pictures screen size it's like got, a, but in the pictures they can read a screen it's a bot yeah, it's yeah, bot, yeah so they can read the screen identify what it is and using natural language processing or ai work it out they can't tick but the they, ones can't, where, they can't tick the box and they also don't know where the box is yeah well, they, they put really annoying photos of like tickets oh, on the screen. I hate that. All the ones with the signs as well. Yeah, the all ones that have doors. Worst. Yeah. The ones that have doors or the ones that have cars. And like if it's got half a car, is that a car? Yeah. Is it still a car? So I, I do need to give a shout out to Arcos Labs, formerly known as Fun Capture. A R C H O S. They are K O S E. Oh, okay. Yeah. Different no, they're, they're, uh They are probably the biggest competitor to uh, Capture and Recapture. Oh, okay. And so they, they use. Um, AI to actually generate on the fly different sort of p- puzzles. And so it's like uh, drag the picture of the woman into the center of the box and it'll create, you know, what looks so like there's a interactive or woman. Seat. Something like that would probably also, that would probably also hammer a bot. Oh, it did. They, they kill it. Yeah. They kill it. And um, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I don't know if I have to disclose that I'm a shareholder or not. I'm a shareholder of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you're like the one yeah, percent. No, share. it's one percent of one share. Yeah, no, it's there like, you go. yeah. But uh, <laughs> the, the, you know, f- following where this is going, I think that you know when you look at a site like Microsoft and it has the old school text based, not even not even the really funkified one, but just like there's an no. A turned to like forty five degrees, and I'm like, that can easily be. Beaten. Well, this is the thing. So maybe the listeners are going, well, why are these guys spending so much time talking about this? You need to remember that Ari and I both come from the media and marketing industries where fraud and click fraud is a huge thing. So people filling out forms or completing surveys or things for reward and more importantly for the brands to learn and understand. Um, they cannot beat the recapture box. I say they cannot. I'm sure there's going to be a clever person out there that eventually figures it out. But for now, it's almost foolproof. So a simple little box that says, I am a human. Yes, you are, because a bot can't do it. Yeah. That wraps up things with a Z. With a Z. 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 What shirt are you wearing there, Brad? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, because unlike other celebrities, I don't do show changes and and what's it uh, outfit changes mid show. <laughs> um, I am still wearing my Alcatel shirt because they are the sponsor of our show, and we are giving away another Alcatel one. So, guys, yeah, I think um, that's now six phones. I'm not sure. I've lost track. But go follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. There will be the post of what you have to do. Normally, it's just listening to the show, and we're very sneaky. It could be any part of the show. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have to listen to the show. You got to listen to the show. Uh, but you should be wanting to listen to the show anyway. We shouldn't have to bribe you with a phone. Uh, absolutely. But we are. There's yep. another cool phone. Thanks, guys. Um, and that will then take us into extended reality. Extended reality. XR. XR. Cool. So, where are you going first, V or A? I will start with, I've only got one AR, so I might as well go there. Oh, yeah, I got two. Um, this is k- kind of AR and VR, but it, they're, you, they're touting it for AR. This is more of a hardware, and it's, uh, it's called TAP. And TAP is... Is it spelled like T-A-P-P? T- no, just, just T-A-P. T-A-P. Huh, um, that's interesting. It, it, it resembles what they're describing as a silicone knuckle, knuckle duster, but it's basically uh, if you if you had... Uh, what do you call it? Brass knuckles. Yeah. What we call it. Um, and basically, you tap 
a surface, any surface, your leg, your table, whatever, and it replaces a keyboard. And so, so you're holding this thing on your hand. Uh, it's just on your knuckles. So it basically. looks like a knuckle duster. It looks like a knuckle duster, and you're basically tapping, and it replaces a keyboard. And so, in AR and VR, and so uh, through VR, if you have glasses or extend uh, MR, like a hollow lens headset, yeah, yeah. you could see a keyboard in front of you and tap on your leg or it's whatever. It's kind of like what they tr- what HTC did with their puck when they put their puck into a VR to make an object yeah, become part yeah. of your environment. So yeah. now you can make. You can engage. Get a keyboard and see it. Um, That's interesting. I Different don't, play. I don't know enough about it to say if it's really good or not. It seems like everything outside of typing makes sense because you can swipe, you can slide, you can grab you something and move it. Leap motion for that. I mean, that would be a natural play for them as well. You do, but leap motion, you have to have something external. This is something you can carry on you and put it on your, on your hands. Maybe they'll do a Bluetooth version. Maybe I already know something like that's coming out. A little leap Bluetooth portable that goes with you. And you put it down. Yeah. I, it's again that. I, I'm not knocking. I'm just vision. saying. Yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's another opening into another way of portable interface devices. Yeah. Cool. Have you got a picture of it? I'm just like trying to picture it. Uh, While you look that up, I'm going to stay with AR because we actually mentioned this last week. You mentioned this last week. And I read an article this week. I can read. Oh, yeah. I'm just looking at the picture. Those look like those... Do you remember those bands that everyone was wearing with the hologram stickers on that were going to make you super strong in that? Do you remember them? They proved it was an absolute con. It has a holographic sticker and a rubber band. Yep. Anywho. Um, AR could replace smartphones, is the heading, in as little as 10 years. Now, this is exactly what you said last week. You said that we were talking about the phones and whatever, and you said, well, maybe when it moves into the, the lens or the hardware... These guys are reckoning that AR should replace smartphones, or sorry, could replace smartphones. Um, it was an essay that was written on AR technology by someone called, I hope I pronounced it right, Soren Studel, who is the head of displays research um, activity at the R&D hub IMEC, I-M-E-C. And he explains why he believes the devices will prove the next big thing. Now, we, for, especially for entertainment and infotainment, it does make sense. But we, you mentioned last week, we've definitely mentioned it before, that the need to carry around a phone should be negated if you could just wear a headset. Like what Google Glass tried to do all those years ago, and too early, maybe wrong interface. But if you're wearing glasses and you've got all the information there and you've got bone conducting, or you could put a headset in, I suppose, yep. why do you need a phone? Keep your hands free. You, we, we talk to our devices all day long. You talk when you dictate. You talk to ask it for the weather. So, um, yeah, someone's actually gone and started writing the essays and putting a timeline to it. He's saying 10 years. I, I would believe that. Um, I would adopt that. I don't think I need my phone. My fear, and it's a dystopian fear, is that not only do we have glasses on, and actually there's a show called, oh, I want to say The End or something, um, that has... Uh, the guy who's married to Madonna. Guy Rich. No, no. The f- Sean Penn. Oh, yeah. In it. And it's this future thing, and everyone has glasses on, and basically AR is what everyone sees, kind of like... Um, I don't think I've seen that. Uh, Minority Report style. So, uh, But th- there's that um, hyper-reality YouTube video, and, and this is that fear that we will no longer have a, a device that we have to actually look at because everything will be fed to our eyes directly. Um, and not only our eyes, but we'll also have haptic sensations where we can feel and smell and hear everything around us. So, it, you know, for all intents and purposes, if you want to receive an advertisement, not only is it going to invade your space, um, it'll invade not only your eyes, but your ears and your smell and potentially your touch as well, looking at like the Tesla suit with full body haptics. So 10 years from now, looking back on today, I'm pretty sure that will be like 70% where we all think we'll be, but how we engage with the world around us will be completely different than we are right now. Prediction. Yeah. Well, th- this is, again, my bugbear. We have all these little bits and pieces the of tech. The tech is there. It's there. It's just that these guys don't play together nicely. Yeah. It's this closed system, and Apple's the worst at that. Um, okay, I'm not going to bash Apple. Let me just bash Facebook instead. It's easier. <laughs> um and in fact, you reviewed, this is why I've, I put this article, because I want to ask you your views on this. Facebook are infamous for copying. And if they can't copy or steal, they acquire. I mean, that's what we've 
scene. It's their modus operandi. Facebook is considering using cartilage conduction. Okay. Technology and its augmented reality headsets. Now, I didn't know they had an augmented reality headset, but apparently do. They've just filed a patent. This is Facebook, you're saying? Facebook. Right. They've just filed a patent. They detail a solution which will allow users to hear digitally generated sounds without wearing headphones. This involves building a transducer, that's what they've called it, that produces sound by vibrating behind the ear, therefore not blocking out ambient audio, blah, blah, blah. Uh, bone conductor? No. Yeah, now they say behind the ear. That's the only thing that I'm questioning. Normally it sits in front of the ear, the bone conductors, so the, the headsets. The they bone, sits here. Bone conductors on your jaw. Yeah. And so they're, they're saying they're it's behind. The cartilage in your ear. So it's vibrating on the back of your ear. Same, same, but different? Same, same, but different. And unless you cover the ear canal, you're, you're not going to get certain sounds in. It's, so it's, just, it's just not is, there. Is this another Zuckerberg? Uh, there we go. I, I, I would say so. Okay. I said I need to bash on them. I, I'm. It's very rare that I find positive stuff on Facebook. Like, they they're just becoming evil. Could be cool, but but it's yeah. same same. Like to- totally. Like Audio Audio Shocks was the brand we talked about last week, and they're not the only ones. Bose does a bone conductor. I think even the big brands like Stenhauser, they all do it. Get so into it. Cartilage. So my anywho, line, I do have a bit of AR news. Like okay, it's, it's AR into VR, and um, our friends. The uh, the people are battling uh, Amazon, uh, Walmart. Why are they battling Amazon? Well, because Amazon's taking their oh, lunch. Oh, you mean from, oh, from right Sunny? Sorry, yeah, I thought yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, I, yeah, I, no. I thought Mike Tech. Okay, yeah, yeah no, um, no, everyone's going to battle Amazon. No, but <laughs> what Walmart is, I think, trying to you know jump the line or jump the queue, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they are very active. In well, yes, he's just lost eight billion dollars to his wife. True, true. <laughs> but they're very active in AR and VR. Um, to the point where they have a company called Spatial Ampersand, Spatial Ansign, and um, it's it's an incubator for immersive experiences of both virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, what's very cool is they actually had a an AR experience that was AR and VR, where you can uh, try a tent and see what a tent looks like. I and know so there's some big people that go and shop there, but who wears a tent? No, no, go like for camping. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but... Um, Sometimes it's hard. So what to you'd actually walk it. through the tent. So now it's been built and erected. So when it says it's a three sleep, like a three partition tent, that's it. You can actually see how, I think how that's big it is. Brilliant, because so you, you I've made in. that mistake. And and you've seen we've all seen the AR ones where you activate a trigger and then you can see like a real estate space. And yeah. You can look through your through your phone, but the viewfinder showed you a tent. So that's the idea of functional and useful. I right? think that is a very because for cool. people that don't know and have never bought a tent, when it says it has three rooms. Uh, yeah, not what you were thinking. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's not like, what you yeah, were thinking. Not, there's no recliner. And then when you're up like there in the cold and the wet and you want to set this thing up and there's six of you and there's apparently three rooms. That's it. The first room is a place that you put your shoes. That's yeah. a room. It's an area. It's not a person. But, but think about it. Tents sitting there in front of you on the ground, right? So it, first of all, it's real size. Yeah. And so we've seen the ones like Ikea space where you can put an Ikea thing down. Platar has a really nice one where you can put different objects down and it's like real size based on the distance from your phone to you. Now, when you place a tent in front of you on the ground using uh, AR Core, AR Kit, it can hold that space mm. based on the 3D environment. So you can around. also walk around it. So you walk around it to see the size of it, and then you go right into it, and you can see inside. That space one is for your shoes, <laughs> <laughs> not for two human beings. Exactly. True story, not two, for the show. Yeah. But uh, cool. Um, I don't have anything else on AR. I've got a VR story oh. that came across vr go in local oh as i said always try to find the locals it's called farm vr um okay. so vr is proving popular with australian farmers it's not something i would have thought about you know, like you think of the farms and it's out there and there's the bush and everything else um some of the country's biggest agriculturists are using vr in applications such as inspecting and selling stock or recruiting and staff training so before you get all the way out there or if you're looking to sire, like if there's a bull or something like that that you want to, you can now go and see it. So I've got the bull. I can bring it into a, or him into a VR environment. Wherever you are, you can see the bull and see all the specs on the bull. Um, trainers in the US and Europe are all, and everywhere else have, have been interacting with him uh, you know, on a live basis as well. So you can have live VR. Um, and there's a guy by the name of, I've got his name here, yeah, Scott Jericho um, from this, Farm equipment supply case RH, and they're working with 
the startup farm vr which basically came from a former dairy farmer who now puts 3d videos together for the agriculture industry and the farmers shout out to them and they've had a hard time with the drought that we've had here yeah um i see i think it was Woolworths. they've just increased their milk by 10 cents a liter and they're donating that money to the farmers so guys i know i know everyone's trying to save money and you know that we already live in an incredibly expensive country I have started buying my milk at Woolworths and I'm quite happy to pay a dollar instead of 90 cents or dollar 10 or whatever it is. We, we need our farmers. Like without them, we're kind of stuffed. No, so definitely. the fact that they're using VR and they can start drawing from the rest of the world without having to go and travel there and then they can learn in real time. It's a great use of VR, totally. I think. Well, I, a call out to Raj, um, you know, big friend of the show because he, he his, his whole point was using VR and training in HR mm. and uh you know their their crane platform. in fact yeah he should be speaking to these guys Rog. totally you need to speak to these guys on from farm vr so they, they they've been doing quite well um and i think they've got their crane uh training platform out in front of a few different people and um crane and dogger to give you a shout out but the a lot of the vr news that i saw are snippets of you know in hr related work uh for example 2017 kfc has been using vr to teach staff how to cook fried chicken since 2017. Fried chicken, yeah. Fried chicken. Um, it's a company called Sweet Rush that has been working with Hilton Hotels um, that gives people an experience in VR of standing in front of uh, of running a hotel. So from front uh, desk so to housekeeping. Do they do like angry customer? Can, I, you totally, know what I mean? Totally. And, you know, if you think about it, you don't need more than uh, 360 video to be able to see how people are going to respond. Oh. And so you record their responses and see what they're going to do. Um, That's pretty cool. The, the I think that idea of using VR to give people an experience um, is very important. You've also got the other side, and I think you mentioned it uh, a couple of weeks ago, was the 60 seconds of video recording. Um, for, it's a HR platform where... Well, this, this is actually a company called... Um, Spaceship or astronaut, and they're over in Indonesia. The they're spaceship a startup. we were yeah. talking about. So I do remember that. I, th- I think astronaut, you got 60 seconds to record a video of yourself, but what this is doing is going to VR, so you're actually seeing yourself and engaging with someone on the other side of the camera. And so that, that, that virtual experience to be able to be in a room and have a presence with someone there asking you those questions and responding um, and being able to look in their eyes. Right, like right now I'm seeing your Yeah, yeah. Very romantic. But, you know, but, but I think that's really important from that immersive experience. It's one thing to record yourself on a camera. It's another thing to have someone across from you who's not you in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. That would... Well, 5G. Yeah, I yeah. No, that's See? the... Because <laughs> that's actually... I mean, we always talk about XR, and, and I know we're at the end of the show, we've got to wrap it up, but there is... A, a, I mean, you and I are fanboys. There's the purest form of why we need 5g what it can do for us from being anywhere we want to be able to engage and do what we need to do in a vr environment and get fried for doing it fried chicken last little bit last little bit you got it and this makes little sense to me um and just a little bit uh we mentioned before the viewmaster the the toy for children which has a plastic disc you slide around you can see 3d i don't know what that is anymore so so they made a vr toy okay uh, and it was very very similar to google cardboard very basic we talked about we did that. we did yeah, we did yeah, yeah. they're making a full-length feature film about um viewmaster now how, I, well, I, well like there's a barbie movie there's a gi you know there's a gi joe movie i don't know how they can make a movie about viewmaster maybe you look in and suddenly it turns real and you jump in kind of tron style but um yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I just thought that was like, okay, that's do you odd. master a full length movie? That's like, mm, that's, that's a stretch. <laughs> yeah, it's asking. I mean, like the Lego movie and the bricks, I think it was caught, makes yeah. sense. We understand where it comes from and that the earth's flat, that's fine. But, yep. but do you master? It's a, it's, that, that's, a toy. it's a stretch. It's a, stretch. a good way of ending up. Um, Aria, we, we are at the end of the show and uh, we're end of an era, mate. That's um, it. Yeah, it's, you, you're leaving our shores. You're flying into the yonder. Yes. The deep, dark yonder of 200 and something million people. It's a big place. Um, Dude, normally I finish off a show, but I think, you know, from the time I've known you, I know you've got this one 
quote that you love and I think it's apt for this moment in time. So I think you finish off our, our, our last show together for a while. Yeah, and uh, before we finish off, is there anything else? Um, no, I can't remember now. Was What did I do wrong? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No. Uh, I will finish it with a quote from one of my favorite movies, Buckaroo, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, wherever you go, there you are. That's fantastic. So wherever you go, mate, go well and go safe. Thank you. And it's been real. And we'll have you on uh, via the beauty of the internet. I'll be back. Thanks for listening to our latest episode of The Technology Show. Remember, for more episodes, hop onto eaglewavesradio.com.au. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Catch you next time.